So today we are going to be working on the Finishing Lines 1991 NA1 Acura NSX. So we have a problem that we need to address. Uh, this NSX was purchased with a non-functioning ABS pump. This is super common in these older NSXs, 30 plus year old parts, um, they just things fail over time and it hasn't caused any major problems at this point. The connector's been jumped so there's no light on the dash. Uh, everything's pretty happy, uh, just the ABS doesn't work. Because it doesn't work, I just figured we should get rid of it, uh, take out all the extra components we don't need, and it would give me an opportunity to potentially uh, put my own twist on how I want to make this solution for removing the ABS module. So one thing that I have not really seen anyone else do is insert an adjustable bias valve or portioning valve into the system in line with the rear brakes so that we can dial in how much more or less rear brake we want for our exact setup and at that rate to someone else's setup. There are so many things that change from car to car, not just uh, you know your brake setup like stock versus big brakes, but uh, things like wheel and tire combo, you know, a, a wider, meteor wheel and tire will have a better grip to the pavement. You can get away with more rear brake and take advantage of that. So I felt like this would be a cool thing to introduce the NSX community as an option, something you can buy as a kit and easily install. And I also thought that maybe you guys would want to see how we go about designing a new kit, coming up with a solution, and just kind of show you how we do it from start to finish. So uh, stay tuned. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is pull the cap, suck out all the fluid, and we'll go around to all four corners, just pull all the fluid out of the system so we can get started. Okay, so I've got all the fluid removed from the system now. I'm gonna go ahead and break loose all of our lines with a line wrench. And work on getting all these removed and then we can pull the ABS pump out. All right, so we've got the ABS module out. This thing is massive. I'm gonna throw it on a scale, see how much weight savings we've got. Guys, that module alone is over 23 pounds. That'll be great to get rid of. Okay, so just a quick overview. We have the ABS module now removed. You can see the gigantic amount of empty space that leaves in the front bay area and these are two 
rear brake port junction uh, ports. They do give a convenient brake point in the factory system. Those two lines on the back side of it that you can see run through the interior and back to the back. Um, so basically we're just going to create a solution to plumb these two ports into probably an outlet T going into an adjustable valve and then use one of those two ports to feed that. The other port will run to a T and split out into each front brake control. Okay, so I've spent a little time uh, scouting out the situation, trying to figure out my first idea for a design uh, to mount our adjustable proportionate or bias valve. Um, and the first thing that I decided to do was just start with a little stainless hardline elbow uh, through one of our limited edition lemon lime tube nuts on the side that's gonna connect to the proportioning valve. Uh, we do have these in a bunch of different colors and we'll offer them with the kits and in a bunch of different varieties for you guys. But for now, we are going to just get the hard line and the prop mounted in here loosely so we can start to figure out how to get the rest of it plumbed after that. Okay, so here's a quick overview of how the prop looks mounted in our first attempt at position. Basically, our two outlets coming out of a T on the bottom side here, and then we just need to figure out how to plumb to those two ports on this rear brake junction. And once we get that sorted out, that'll be the rear half of our plumbing solution. So we'll work on that next. Okay, so I'm getting started on figuring out plumbing these two ports to these two ports. And I'm just gonna show you a little hack of one thing that I like to use sometimes when jigging up hard line. Um, working with a whole roll of hard line and trying to get uh, it into a space where you're working tight obviously doesn't work out very well. So I tend to take some type of like, this is just mild steel TIG filler rod. Uh, it's strong, it's bendable, and you can basically form the shapes that you need out of it and make uh, like a little stencil. So what I'm doing is just to give an example. So this goes into the port here, and then you can see that I'm got a bend. It's gonna go down, and then we're gonna form the rest of the bends here to plumb to the back port of the T. Okay, so here is our first iteration of a hardline template for the layout of how I plan to plumb these two lines. It's pretty rough and crude. It's just a starting point, but it helps me to use this before I start wasting actual material and attempting to create some more permanent jigs. But that's generally how we're gonna get the bottom two ports plumbed, laid out in a simple cheap material. So first line is concept completion of the top port to the front T port.
now we just gotta work on the other one. So on this one, I went from the welding rod to actually making a jig out of copper nickel before finishing off in stainless. And then we're gonna test fitment on that. So now we've got our three stainless hard lines installed, plumbing the master into the adjustable prop valve and the outlet of the adjustable prop valve going into the two rear junction points for the rear brakes. So sometimes what you have planned and what actually turns out to be reality are two different things, and this is no exception. I thought that I was going to plan to plumb the front half of this system all in flex hose. Uh, it would be easy and quick. That is not going to be the solution. After looking at the space constraints uh, for connecting to the caliper hose and running through the grommeted hole in the front shock towers. I have decided that the front part of the system is going to be hardline as well. So we'll show you a little bit about what I have planned for that. Okay, so here is our quick hardline jig running from the caliper hose up through here. Of course, it runs behind that whole mess. And then you can see that it ends right here and then there's another one and that is for the driver's side and i've done similar on that side so we are going to basically remake these off of our jig and we are going to take a 3 ant join them together and then run a line off of the other outlet of the master cylinder. So we now have the stainless hard lines installed for the front. They are connected to this T. And then I have installed a M12 banjo adapter and banjo bolt right here on the rear port that we are gonna feed the front brakes with. So all that's left is to run a hard line from here back to the T. So this is the planned layout from the T to the banjo adapter off the rear port of the master. Okay, and here's our final line made and plumbed to the T for the front brakes. Now all we have to do is tighten everything down and bleed it, and we'll be good to go. ABS delete all stainless hard line with an adjustable valve for our rear brake bias. Okay guys, that wraps up this video. Um, if you guys liked this kind of content, do me a favor, uh, drop a comment below Tell us if you liked it. Um, it really helps us figure out uh, what kind of content we need to bring for you guys in the future. Um, if you wanna see more kit designs and on-car work, if you like installs in general, uh, just let us know. Give us the feedback, we appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you on the next one.